What do you do when you find that the motor has the proper incoming high voltage, you've sent the proper signals to that motor with your universal zebra or with the system itself, and the motor simply doesn't respond? One of the things that you'll find when working with ECM motors is that equipment manufacturers will often allow you to buy a module, replacement module, separately from the winding section. The modules are generally much less expensive than the, than the entire motor. So if you have that opportunity and you've determined that there's absolutely nothing wrong with the winding section, do yourself and your customer a favor and see if it's available separately. One of the first things that you probably learned, if not have observed on the, on the warning stickers of these motors, is that they retain voltage for about five minutes after all power has been disconnected. I don't mean this after they stop moving, I mean after the high voltage power plug has been disconnected. Therefore, the first thing that you do is remove power to your equipment, remove the power to the motor, and then wait five minutes. Now, I'm not going to sit here for five minutes, but you have to wait that five minutes, or your customer might wake you up from the floor with a bucket of cold water. After you've waited the five minutes, there's usually two to four bolts that need to be removed to separate the two halves of the motor. The module section can either easily pulls away or you might gently pry it off. Once that section's separate, there's a in, in almost all these motors, there's a three-pin connector that needs to be disconnected to allow you to do some tests. There is a tab on this connector that needs to be pushed. Don't pull on the wires. Pull on the tab and the housing of the connector. If you pull on the wires and one of them pulls out, you may wreck the possibility of just replacing the module. Set the module aside, and you want to have a voltmeter, volt-ohm meter, that allows you to check ohms to do the next test. If you have a tool like the VZ7 Variable Zebra, Variable Speed Zebra, it does all these tests automatically for you, but you can do them manually yourself with just a little bit more time. You're, let me give a little background about these motors. ECM motors of the type found in the air conditioning industry have been called DC motors, AC motors, variable speed motors, three-phase motors. Most of those things that you can call these motors are, are accurately true at one point or another. Some theory about how they work is almost all of them have incoming AC power. That AC power gets rectified by a rectifier, smoothed by from two to four capacitors, filtered by filter circuits, and then gets passed down to the power circuits below that usually have transistors, integrated circuits, and other chips, which you can't see, that modulate that DC power, it starts out as AC, it gets converted to a pretty close to pure DC, and then that DC is modulated, the frequency of it's modulated, to match the speed that the motor is, is supposed to turn at. So, variable frequency motor, yes. DC motor, yes. Three-phase motor, yes. Most all ECM motors are true three-phase motors, and the three inputs here exactly are that, three phases. So let's go on to the particular of testing these motors. The one thing that you want to do first is to test that there are no shorts between any of the winding sections and the case itself. You want to have your ohm meter set so that uh, if you have an ohm meter that can beep when there's a short in between there, well, let's go back to ohms. My battery might be low. 
test between the case and any winding and look for anything less than infinity. It, you're, if you have a needle meter, it shouldn't move. If you have uh, a digital meter like this, the reading should stay overload or infinity or something like that. You want to test each of the three windings, keeping your fingers off of the probe that goes in here so that they don't affect your internal body resistance doesn't affect that. If all three of those show no change or open, then the next thing that you're going to do is check each one of these windings against each of the other windings for the exact or, or extremely close to the same resistance. The motor resistances on the windings vary usually based on the horsepower of the motor but most of the time you'll find between 5 and 30 ohms of resistance from each winding to each other winding. So the resistance between each winding and each other winding should be within about 10 percent and should also be in the range of between 5 and 30 ohms. This particular one is 5.3 ohms. Between the next two, 5.1 ohms. And between the third set of terminals, 5.0 ohms, 5.1. They're all relatively close to each other and that tells me that the windings are probably okay. Since we had no uh, shorts between any winding in the case, we'll go to the final test which is spinning the shaft gently. You should, in each ECM motor, because they're wound, uh, because they're made with permanent magnets on the rotor, you should feel a slight resistance, very slight. It should not be hard or difficult to turn. If it is difficult to turn, chances are it's because one of the windings is shorted to another winding. If you, uh, if you were to put a paper clip or a wire between any two of those terminals and then try to turn the shaft, you'd find it extremely difficult to turn. Uh, that can also give you a clue. If you have a difficult to, shaft, difficult to turn shaft when the module is connected and then you disconnect the module and the shaft's easy to turn, that tells you there's a direct short somewhere after that connector inside the module after you've done your test to make sure that all the windings are within decent ranges then you can just replace the module and feel fairly confident that you're going to have the problem taken care of. So again, recapping, disconnect the power, wait five minutes, take it apart, disconnect the three pin connector found on most of these types of motors. Check for free turning shaft check for shorts between the case of the motor and all of the three pins then check the resistances between each of the three sets of pins the first two the last two and the first and the last and make sure those ranges are somewhere within about 10 percent of each other and within the range of about 5 ohms to 30 ohms depending on the horsepower of the motor if all these things are okay the chances are extremely good that the winding section does not need to be replaced if your equipment manufacturer doesn't make you buy the winding section. A few of them do. A few of them won't sell you one part over the other. But you can sometimes save a lot of money by doing that. Okay, let's go on to adapters.